Hello everyone, welcome back to this tutorial series. In the previous episode, we did the bottom navigator and the up bars UI design. If you didn't see that video, go back and check out the part one of this tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna move on and we will create the home screen UI. We will make the top row for the stories and then we will use widget functions to create the posts. If you are interested, Continue watching this video and let's start coding. I just launched my website where you can find this tutorial in a blog post version as well as my other tutorials. I use a slightly different structure to explain the tutorials in my blog post, so don't forget to check them out at mercyhoman.com. Let's create a widget function called home screen. I could write the whole thing inside the build function, but in this way our code will be more clear. The first step is planning, so let's speak about what we need in the home screen. First of all, we will need a column for sure because we want to place the post under each other. At the top we need a row to display the stories next to each other. And in this row we will need separate columns to display the profile picture and the username of each of the users who has story but in my fantasy every user has a story so we don't have to worry about that now. For the section where we can create a story in the real app we will use a circle avatar with a 35 pixel radius and the background image of our profile picture. To see the changes in the app, we should change that what's in the home screen in the widget list above. Write our newly made home screen widget here, delete the word const from the function and let's see the result. I adjusted with paddings 20 at the top and 16 on the left. However, this profile picture is not enough since we need that blue circle with the white plus. I've wrapped the circle avatar with a stack widget. I'm using a stack because I will use a positioned widget in order to be able to place that circle in front of the profile picture. So we need a positioned widget with a child of a circle avatar. Set its radius to 12 and the background color to white because the outer circle has to be white. It has a child that is another circle avatar. Set its size to 10 and the background image will be the images slash at story.png. Now we only have to position it to the right place, that is minus 2 on both the right and the bottom. Then we just need to place a text under the stack with a Your Story caption and wrap it with an 8 pixel top padding. The next thing is another user section. Can you do this alone? You will need three circle avatars. Here you can see the sizes and the images that you have to use. You will also need to place a text under this image and you need to center this text and also wrap it with a container and you have to set the width of this container to 100. Pause this video here and try to solve this alone first. Okay, here's the solution. Check out that you write everything right. In the text, I set the overflow property to text overflow that ellipsis. It will be useful when the name is too long because it will cut the name and place three dots at the end of it, just the way it does in the real app. We have to do the same things with the other Instagrammers as well, so let's just copy this code six times and change the profile picture and the username.
this out of the screen. Thus, we should wrap the whole row with a single child scroll view and set its scroll direction to axis.horizontal. Nice! In case we have already seen the story of a user, we only need to display the profile picture. We need a simple divider widget under the row. And then another column where we can write the posts. The column's children will be the posts. I'm writing the posts in the different widget function. If you pay attention, all the posts have the same design but different parameters, such as the profile picture, location, photo, caption, and so on. Therefore, we need to create a frame that makes sure the design is the same in every post but has a lot of input variables for customization. Let's write widget post. First of all, we need a row to contain the profile picture, the username, the location and the more icon. Let's set its main axis alignment to space between, just the way we used in the up bar. As you may assume, we also need to create an inner row for everything but the more icon. What's the first thing in the inner row? Yes, the profile picture. In the real Instagram app, in case of the user has a story, a colored circle appears around the user's profile picture. We can do this in the same way as we have already done it in the story row. As you probably assume, yes, we have to, to use the three different circle avatars. But what if the user doesn't have a story, then we should use only the user's profile picture. But how can we decide which version to use? We should create a variable called hasStory that uh, will be a boolean, so it will be either true or false, meaning that the user either has a story or doesn't have a story. But how can we write this in the code? We should use conditional operator. What is a conditional operator? A conditional operator is something that looks like this. So basically it's a one line if function and it looks like this as I said. So at the beginning there's a condition and if this condition is true then this expression will evaluate it and if the condition is false then this expression will happen. So we can write our new variable has story here and therefore if the user has story this expression will evaluate it and this will be a widget that create that three circle avatar thing. And if the has story is false, therefore the user doesn't have a story. So this is the widget which responsible for the profile picture only. So let's write it down. And if you don't understand right now, it will be clear for sure. Thus, let's write a condition called has story. This will be either true or false. If it's true, then it will use the small profile with story, but if it's false, it will use the small profile without story. Let's add this has story variable to the inputs of the post function and write true to the function called to try out the more difficult version. Now we need to write those two scenarios. I'm starting with the small profile with story widget. As I've mentioned, we need to code it with the same three circle avatars that we used in the upper row, but with smaller sizes. I'm using 24, 22 and 20 pixels. Now we don't know which profile picture to show since we will use this frame with every Instagrammer, therefore we need to use an input variable. 
In the place of the profile picture, I write Instagrammer dollar sign and the number of user. In this way, if the number of user is 2, then the Instagrammer 2.png will appear as the current profile picture. Since this widget function doesn't know what the num of user means, we need to write it in its input variables. This means that we will tell it when we call it. Thus, we need to write this here as well. And also, it will be one of the input parameters of the post function as well. Therefore, when we call the post function in the column of the home screen widget, we need to tell which Instagrammer's post we want to have. Okay, let's add some padding to the outer circle avatar. The default 8 will be good. Then let's see the small profile without story function. It will return with the same as the inner circle avatar did in the previous function. I'm also wrapping this with the default padding. And don't forget to write the num of user variable in the function call. And also don't forget to write the word return before the widgets since we want this function to return with those things. Yeah, it's working! The next step is the column with the username and the location. I'm setting the cross-axis alignment to cross-axis alignment that start to position it to the left. Then we need two texts. The first will display the username, therefore we need a variable called name. I am writing the name of our first Instagrammer here. The next is very similar, we need to use a variable called location. I am writing San Francisco here. I'm also setting the font families. With the help of the platform function and the conditional operator, we can specify the font family on both Android and iOS. This basically means that if the platform is Android, then use Roboto font, but if the platform is iOS, use Helvetica. I'm also setting the font weight to bold in the username. To be able to use this platform function, we need to import the Dart colon IO package. The last thing here is the more icon. It is really just a simple image with a 40 pixel width. Alright, let's focus on the photo that the user posted. In the images folder, you will find those images with the name like Instagrammer123456 underscore post.png. Therefore, we can differentiate the photos by using the num of user in the way like Instagrammer num of user underscore post.png. In this way, we can easily like differentiate the users and we also don't have to declare another variable, so two birds with one stone. We are really great, guys. <laughs> As you can see, it's overflowing, thus we should wrap the whole column on the top of the home screen function with a single child scroll view. The default scroll direction is vertical, therefore we don't have to mess with that. Great! Now we are ready with the post's upper half. We have a profile picture that can change its appearance. If the user has a story that we didn't see, it has a colored border. We can display the username and the location. In case of the Instagrammer didn't write a location for his or her post, you can write only an empty string there. Finally, in the upper row, we have the more icon as well. Lastly, we were able to show the photo that the Instagrammer has posted. 
The next thing will be the row with the like, comment, message and save buttons. Then we have to create the comment section and the additional text. Finally, we will create this write a comment section. So we will cover all this in the next episode of this series. Plus some bonus content, we need to update a little bit the code that we wrote in the first part, since Instagram released a slightly different UI in the up bar and the bottom navigator. Thank you for watching this video up to the very end. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon to get notified about my latest videos. Until next time, bye!